Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Israeli forces and settlers attack villages around Nablus. U.S. police officer convicted for murder of Dante Wright. Colombia sees 169% increase in forced displacements. And Egyptian activist Sana Saif released from prison. In our first story, over 120 Palestinians were injured by Israeli forces during protests in the occupied West Bank on December 23rd. Thousands of Israeli settlers arrived near the village of Burk, located northwest of Nablus on Thursday. They then marched towards the now-closed Humesh settlement. The illegal outpost was evacuated by the Israeli government in 2005 because it was set up without permission. Despite this, settlers are operating a religious school or yeshiva at the site serving as a de facto outpost. Ahead of the settler march, Israeli forces had blocked the main road between Jenin and Nablus. Palestinians were barred from using the road and the entrances to Burk were blocked with mounds of dirt. Residents of the village had already issued calls for protest before the march. Israeli forces proceeded to attack people using tear gas canisters and rubber-coated metal bullets. According to the Red Crescent, 42 people, including a journalist, were injured with the bullets. Another 83 people suffocated due to tear gas inhalation. Meanwhile, Israeli settlers attacked several Palestinian homes and vehicles in the area. Thursday's violence was the latest in a series of escalating attacks against Palestinians around Nablus. These grew after a settler died after being shot near the illegal Homish outpost last week. A Palestinian official told Middle East Eye that around 25 Palestinian houses were attacked between December 17th and 18th. Over 70 people were injured in the villages of Burk, Beita and Beit Dijan. Attacks were also reported in the Karyath village by settlers from the illegal Esh Kodesh settlement. Next, we go to the U.S., where Minneapolis police officer Kim Potter has been convicted for the killing of Dante Wright. 20-year-old Wright was fatally shot in his car in Brooklyn Center on April 11th. Police claimed that they had pulled him over due to an alleged traffic violation. They also claimed that Wright had tried to evade arrest when they found out that he had an outstanding warrant. Potter proceeded to shoot Wright, leading his car to crash. She later claimed that she had mistaken her gun for a taser. Potter resigned from the police force on April 13th. She was found guilty of first and second degree manslaughter on December 23rd. She will be sentenced on February 18th. Prosecutors argued that even if Potter had intended on using a taser, that in itself was inappropriate. Activists had also argued that police use Wright's supposed traffic violation as a pretextual stop often used to target black people. Dante Wright's murder was followed by days of protest under increasingly militarized conditions in Minneapolis. Widespread use of flashbang grenades, tear gas and rubber bullets was documented. Wright was killed in the same city where 46-year-old George Floyd was murdered by police in 2020. The case sparked a mass uprising against racism and police brutality across the U.S. and in different parts of the world. Next, we go to Colombia, which recorded a 169 increase in forced displacements in 2021. Between January and November 2021, nearly 83,000 people were forcibly displaced from their homes and territories. These findings are part of a report by the Consultancy for Human Rights and Displacement, or CODES. The organization recorded a total of 167 displacement events in the first 11 months of this year. This is an increase of over 65% as compared to 2020. The report also noted the disproportionate impact of displacement on marginalized groups. Over 37,000 Afro-descendant and nearly 19,000 indigenous peoples were forced from their homes. Seven out of ten displaced persons belong to these groups. The departments of Nariño, Antioquia, Choco and Coca in the Pacific and Northwest regions of Colombia were the most affected. 
2021 marked the highest number of victims of displacement since the 2016 peace accords. These incidents are being driven by a rise in violence by paramilitary and illegally armed groups, illicit cocoa production, drug trafficking and illegal mining. Armed groups have specifically targeted land and environmental defenders, union leaders and rights activists. According to Institute of Development and Peace Studies, 166 such individuals have been murdered in 2021 so far, where 1,200 have been killed since the peace accords. The institute has also recorded the deaths of over 320 people in 91 massacres across Colombia this year. And for our final story, Egyptian rights activist Sana Saif has been released from prison after 18 months. 28-year-old was abducted outside the Prosecutor General's office in Cairo in June 2020. She was trying to file a complaint against an attack against her and her family outside the Torah prison the previous day. The family had been visiting the site daily to demand that they be allowed to meet Saif's brother and prominent activist Allah Abdel Fattah. However, they were soon attacked by an armed group of plainclothes women. She was abducted the next day and held under pre-trial detention in Kanatair prison. She was previously detained in 2014 for participating in un supposedly unlawful protests and in 2016 on charges of insulting the judiciary. Saif was sentenced to 18 months in jail in March 2021 on charges of spreading false news related to the COVID-19 pandemic. She was also charged with allegations of using a Facebook account to terrorize people. Saif was finally released from prison on Thursday. However, this was just days after her brother, Ala Abdel Fateh, was sentenced to five years in prison for allegations of spreading false news. Saif and her family have been repeatedly persecuted by the Egyptian government after emerging as prominent activists following the 2011 revolution. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.